The CEO of the second biggest oil company in the world, Saudi Aramco, says that we should abandon the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'm sure you're not surprised to hear this from the CEO of an oil company. But really, let's be realistic here. Is he right? I mean, is it a fantasy to phase out oil and gas? Well, first of all, I don't think even the most hardcore electric car fans or renewable energy fans or futurists, I don't think any of them are saying we have to completely phase out oil. I mean, oil is needed to manufacture this microphone. We need it for plastics. There's lots of things that we have to have oil for, but we don't need to burn it in vehicles. Of course, the CEO of Saudi Aramco doesn't want you to think that. He wants you to think you need it. You need to have internal combustion engine vehicles. The head of the world's largest energy company on Monday urged the world to accept the hard reality that oil and natural gas is going to be around for a long time to come and consumption of both sources of energy will grow for the next decade or two. Now, a lot of people believe that we've already reached peak oil, but clearly Saudi Aramco believe that no, we haven't. Energy use, oil use, oil use and gas use, they believe is going to actually continue to rise. In a speech at a Houston energy conference, Saudi Aramco CEO Amin Nasser described the ambitious timetales of environmental groups as a fantasy. They are failing because the world continues to consume record amounts of fossil fuels every year. We should abandon the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas and instead invest in them, adequately reflecting realistic demand assumptions, he said. So he believes that actually we should be investing in more oil and gas extraction. Oil consumption will reach a new record of 104 million barrels per day this year, Nasser said and could keep growing through 2045. All this strengthens the view that peak oil and gas is unlikely for some time to come, let alone 2030, he said. No one is betting the farm on that. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'll bet the farm on that. I'm 100% confident that he's 100% wrong. I don't believe that the CEO of Saudi Aramco has the kind of spare time to invest in really learning who his true rivals are and how good they are. Really figuring out that the transition away from internal combustion vehicles to electric cars is happening a lot faster than he realizes. Now, Nasser's comments come just a few months after countries around the world, including Saudi Arabia, reached a new climate agreement, which specifically calls for their transitioning away from fossil fuels in energy systems to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. After the agreement was passed in December during the UN climate conference, the president of the two-week summit in Dubai, Sultan Al Jaber, said the New Deal would set the world in the right direction. The agreement was considered groundbreaking as it marked the first time that countries agreed to explicitly address fossil fuels and the need to move away from oil, natural gas and coal in order to limit global warming. The most recent World Energy Outlook report from the International Energy Agency, the IEA, predicts that the way the world is powered will change dramatically by the end of this decade, thanks to surging demand for electric vehicles and to massively reduce prices for clean energy technologies from solar panels to wind turbines to enormous battery packs. The report included a stark warning a warning that much stronger policies are needed to limit fossil fuel emissions to keep warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. In Houston on Monday, at the CIRA Week by S&P Global Energy Conference, some other CEOs of oil companies cautioned how, it will, how long it will actually take for the world to shift to low carbon sources of energy, such as hydrogen. We're not on the path to meet net zero by 2050 currently, and one of the challenges here is that while society wants to see emissions reduced, nobody wants to pay for it, said Darren Woods, chief executive of ExxonMobil. Now, of course, ExxonMobil would say that because they don't want to pay for it, but the reality is uh, humans are doing this on a daily basis. Solar panels that were deployed on residential homes, so everyday mum and dads who have you know roofs, the amount of solar panels installed doubled last year compared to the year before. And those people are more than happy to pay for it. Now, the fact that Saudi Aramco doesn't want to pay for it or that ExxonMobil doesn't want to help uh, become a part of this future, in my opinion, means 
that uh, eventually they'll be like Kodak. Eventually they'll realize it's too late. Now, at least Shell is aware of what's happening. Shell say that it is actually going to build many, many thousands of electric car stations around the world and at the same time shut down thousands of gasoline service stations. Around the, around the world, investment in renewable energy is actually outpacing the amount spent on growing the oil and natural gas industry. That point was highlighted by US Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm in her speech as she described a clean energy revolution in the country. She urged members of the oil patch to take action on climate change. But realistically, that's like telling Toyota to build electric cars. Toyota, Kodak, Saudi Aramco, in my opinion, they're all in that same basket. They all want to believe the future isn't coming, that change isn't happening. Oil prices have hovered in the 70s and consumers are calling for change. Investors are calling for change. We in this room have the power to manage this transition responsibly and with urgency, she said. The difference in the views of Granholm and NASA was noticeable and were two different realities, said Amanda Eversole, Executive Vice President with the American Petroleum Institute in an interview with CBC News on the sidelines of Sierra Week. We want to get back to the facts of what the world needs in terms of energy demand and make sure that we do it in a way that produces affordable, reliable and cleaner energy, she said. Shell's CEO, Wael Sawan, struck a more of a conciliatory tone by criticizing the increasing polarization of energy. Is it oil and gas or is it solar and wind? It's all and we need them in abundance, said Sawan. Now, I'm not convinced that's true. I think we just need, uh, we need in abundance solar, wind and batteries. I believe that they provide all the solutions we need and we've already seen that happen in places like South Australia. The International Energy Agency continues to forecast global oil demand to grow this year, although last week it updated its outlook to project a supply deficit. The report boosted oil prices above US $80 per barrel. The exciting truth is that we already have cheaper alternatives for oil and gas in transportation, home heating and cooling and electricity generation. And we are investing in new ways to replace it for other users, said Keith Stewart, senior energy strategist at Greenpeace Canada in an email. The only questions are, if we will make the transition off fossil fuels fast enough to avoid the worst impacts on climate change and how we can support workers and communities in oil producing regions through the transition. Now, I believe there's a lot of denial going on here. Now, the oil and gas community believes that the profits, the record profits and the record production will just keep on going on forever and that nothing's ever really going to change. But I think we all know that's not how the world works. In fact, things change very, very quickly. And if you're not changing, or if you're not disrupting, then you're the one being disrupted.